Hey guys, so this week I've been playing Mass Effect 3, finally it's here, and they got Lady Shep on there, which is great because I'm one of those weird dudes that plays the female Shepherd because I'm weird like that. Anyways, Mass Effect 3's here, it's been, I don't know, like six, seven years since the first game came out. Can this game possibly stand up to all the scrutiny and all the things we expect upon it? We have so much, like, preconceived things about what we want Mass Effect 3 to be. Can it stand up? Is it going to be worth it? Is it just kind of Mass Effect 2 but better? Is it amazing? Well, here's my opinion of Mass Effect 3. When I picked up the first Mass Effect in 2007, I was really blown away by it. I think at the time it was probably my first Bioware RPG, and I loved the choices, the character, the decisions, and going Renegade or Paragon and all that stuff. My only real problems with it were, as a shooter, it wasn't quite so good, and driving around the Mako was terrible. Thankfully, a couple of years later, Mass Effect 2 showed up, completely redid the combat and made it amazing, and got rid of the Mako, which made it that much more amazing. Mass Effect 2 pretty much doubled down on the character development and added the whole squad thing and introduced you to more characters and made you like characters and then killed them off to piss you off. So here we are in 2012 with Mass Effect 3 and this is clearly a day one purchase for me and a lot of you out there. So the question really is, does Mass Effect 3 stand up to Mass Effect 1 and 2 in terms of story and combat and all that stuff and take it beyond and does it round out the series? In terms of the combat, they definitely stuck with the if it ain't broke theory because it wasn't broke. They made some small tweaks here and there to the combat to make it a little better than it was in the last game, but overall it kept it pretty much the same. The game is still a third-person cover-based shooter where you and two AI-controlled squad mates go and fight waves of enemies. One of the interesting things they added is that your character can hold as many weapons as you want. You can hold an assault rifle and a shotgun and a sniper rifle while holding a pistol and an SMG all at the same time. But the trade-off is, the more stuff you're carrying, the more encumbered you are, so the longer it takes your powers to recharge. So if you don't want to wait 45 seconds between using, like, a hack on a Geth's trooper or going invisible, then I suggest you only carry two weapons at a time. As for the combat, they do a great job at pacing it and spreading things out and creating cover and creating really awesome moments. It really seems to be taking its cue from like Modern Warfare and Gears of War in terms of how they pace the combat. In terms of the story, this being the final game in the trilogy, they really want to just take it to the next level. The game starts out with your Commander Shepard having been relieved of duty after the events of the downloadable content that you might have not played from the last game and just kind of sitting waiting for stuff to happen. Of course, you don't have to wait very long because right away the Reapers attack Earth directly and just start blowing stuff up. It becomes apparent to Commander Shepard that he is completely outmatched in this fight and needs to fall back and gather some support. And support is the main through line of the game. As Commander Shepard, you travel the galaxy trying to gather whoever and whatever you can to help you fight against the Reapers. Shepard has to make deals with people he normally wouldn't work with and broker peace between warring factions that have been at each other's throats for thousands of years. All of this while the Reapers are, rather quickly, destroying Earth and everything around it. There's a definite sense of immediacy and the need to complete your task as quickly as possible. But of course, that doesn't mean Commander Shepard doesn't have time to let her hair down. Maybe cut a rug on the dance floor, or even have an intimate shower with a young communications officer. The game comes with the typical distractions and side missions and all that stuff that you would expect in the game, but there's always this sense of immediacy, and there's never a feeling like, oh, well, is there a war on? And while you're gathering support and ships and all that stuff, you can still engage in all the, you know, side missions and romance options. You can even try and have sex with Jessica Chobot. It's not like any of us actually have a chance with her in real life. The game constantly tries to humanize Shepard and remind you of the stakes by putting these little dream sequences where you see this little kid that died, but I never really felt all that attached to this kid because you see him for like two seconds in the game. But then the dream starts to get filled with the voices of the characters that start dying in the game, and I start to get really emotional thinking about all these people that I really like that are dying all left and right. I managed to pull all 11 of my squad mates out of Mass Effect 2. I lost five of them in this game in the first couple of hours. Besides the single player, the game also has a multiplayer component, which a lot of people were worried was just tacked on to fill the online pass, which maybe it kind of was the inception of it, but the multiplayer is actually kind of fun. Played any of the horde mode type stuff from Gears of War or Halo or any of that stuff, then you immediately know what to expect from this. You and three of your buddies land on one of seven maps and have to survive 11 waves of either Geth, Cerberus, or Reaper Troopers. The multiplayer's combat plays out just like the single player's combat in its cover-based shooter. You pick one of the classes and you earn experience points so you can level up. One of the cool things is you can unlock different races to play as, and the different races actually have different abilities. 
A human infiltrator, for example, has the ability to, you know, freeze guys, whereas a quarian can actually hack Geth instead. As you compete in the multiplayer, you earn points which you can use to buy crates. Inside the crates are temporary abilities that you can use throughout the game, also a chance of unlocking weapons, and new character races. And there's three price levels of crates, and the pricier ones have a higher chance of unlocking better stuff. But for some strange reason, not only can you use your points that you earn in-game, you can also use real-life Microsoft points or PSN points or whatever to buy these crates with real money. I think it's kind of a weird and stupid move, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay. It doesn't make you better at the game by spending all your mom's money on these crates. The multiplayer itself is a lot of fun and a great distraction from, you know, the single player campaign, adds a little longevity, but it actually does affect the single player campaign. As you play the multiplayer, you're actually raising your galactic readiness rating. This rating will actually help you in the game and actually improve the ending if you get it high enough. Final verdict on Mass Effect 3? It's amazing. I loved it. If you played the first two and you loved the first two, get this game. Why, why are you even considering not getting it? Get it. Uh, it's great. It has everything I was expecting and hoped for. Uh, it's not quite the leap forward that Mass Effect 1 was to Mass Effect 2, but it didn't have to be. It improved on Mass Effect 2 in enough ways. Uh, the story stuff is great. Uh, the, the people die, all that, you know, uh, explosions, all great. Uh, multiplayer is a lot of fun. Uh, I disagree with, like, online passes and paying real money for the multiplayer unlocks. Uh, but overall, it's an amazing package and probably my favorite game to come out this year.